Hello everyone. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to work out this second sample midterm solutions. So feel free to work out the questions first and then you can check your answers with mine. So I'll leave a PDF version of the test in the description box for you to work out and access the test. So let's dive into it. For the first problem, we're going to solve this inequality. Now this is a linear inequality because the degree of our variable is one. So I'm gonna go ahead and first get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by two. So let's go ahead and do that. So you will have two times four X, that's eight X plus two times seven, that's 14 less than, and then the two will cancel from the right-hand side. You'll just have three. And then I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 14 from both sides. So that will give us eight X is less than negative 11. Divide both sides by eight. So we have X is less than negative 11 over eight. So that's our solution to this inequality, but we wanna express it using interval notation. So let's go ahead and draw this on the real line. Let's suppose negative 11 over eight is right here. It's an open circle at 11 because the inequality is strictly less than, and we're going to the left, so this way. Our solution, we can say it's going to be negative infinity all the way to negative 11 over eight open. So that will be your solution using interval notation. Okay, moving on to the next problem. So we want to evaluate f of two and f of um, two times f of negative one using this formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and find each of these pieces. So f of two is going to be, you plug in two in place of x, so you'll have two cubed minus three times two. So that would give you eight minus three times two, that's six, so that would be two. So f of two will be replaced with two. And then f of negative one, again, replace negative one into the function. So you have negative one cubed minus three times negative one. So negative one cubed, that's negative one. Negative three times negative one, that's positive three, which would be two. So f of negative one, it's gonna be two. And now let's plug it into this formula that we're after. So we're looking for what is f of two plus two times f of negative one. So f of two, that's two. And then two times f of negative one, that's also two. And you compute this, this will be two plus four, which is six. So this function evaluates two, six. All right, moving on to the next problem. We want to find the domain of this function. Since it's a square root, we wanna make sure this quantity is always positive. So I'm gonna take the inside one minus five X, set it greater than or equal to zero. And then you solve. So subtract one from both sides, negative five X greater than or equal to negative one, divide by negative five. Now, when you do that, you have to switch the inequality. So you have now X being less than or equal to uh, positive one over five. So that's the domain. In interval notation, we're going to say from negative infinity all the way to one over five, including one over five, is the domain of f. So that will be our domain for this function. All right, so number four um, seems like there is a graph missing. So I'm gonna skip this problem because there's no graph to find the local maximum value. So moving on to the next problem. So here is number five. We want to determine the net change of this uh, function between t equals six and t equals 12. So net change is given by this formula. So you should remember this. It is f of b minus f of a. So change in the function values. So let's label our point. So you're using r of t. So let's call the first point your a. The second point is your b. So r of a is going to be r of six. Plug in six into the function. So you have six minus one over six times six, which would be six minus one. That, uh, that's gonna be five. And then R of B, it's gonna be R of 12. So that's six minus one over six times 12. That's six minus 
two because 12 over six, that's two. And this would give you four. So the net change using the formula we wrote down, it's gonna be R of B minus R of A. In our case, R of B is R of 12 and R of A will be R of six. So that would be, um, so we got four for R of 12. So this is four minus five, that's negative one. So our net change is negative one. For number six, we want to find f inverse of 10 when f of x is equal to this function. So if 10 is the input for the inverse function, that means it's the output for the original function. So we're going to set 6x plus 7 equals to 10 and figure out what x value corresponds to 10. So let's subtract 7 from both sides. So you will have 6x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 6. So you'll have x is equal to 3 over 6 or 1 over 2. So that means that f inverse of 10 is equal to 1 half. So that's how you would figure out this value. So number seven, we're going to sketch this function, uh, this equation y equals absolute value of x plus 10 plus one. So we're gonna do it by using transformations of functions. So the first function we're gonna start with is um, absolute value of x. And then absolute value of x plus 10, well, this means we're going to shift left 10 units. That's what that means. And then the plus one, so you have absolute value of x plus 10, and then plus one, that plus ones means you're going to shift up one unit. So that will be the final sketch. So using transformations, we do this. So we know absolute value of x looks like this. So it looks like a V. So we'll have a graph that looks like that. So that's the parent function. So absolute value of x plus 10. So we're gonna go to the left 10 units. So let's suppose this is negative 10. And then you know the graph, it will look like that. And then we're gonna go up one unit. So one unit up, so right here. So that's where the final sketch would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase these and make the final sketch. So something like that. So that will be our final sketch. So this passes through the point negative 10, one, and we should also find the y-intercept since the graph is gonna cut through the y-axis right here. So y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. So we're going to find that by setting x equals zero. So when x is equal to zero here, you will have absolute value of zero plus 10, which is 10. Absolute value of 10 is 10 plus one, that's 11. So this will be zero comma 11. So that would be the point. And that completes our graph. This is y equals absolute value of x plus 10 plus one outside. For number eight, we're going to find g of f of two when f of x is five x minus two and g of x is three x minus x squared. So this means that we're going to do g of f of two. So you do f of two first. So g is the outer function. Plug in two into f. So I'm gonna plug in two in here first into f. So f will do five times x. So that would be five times two um, minus two. So that would give you five times two, that's 10 minus two, that's eight. So it becomes g of eight. Now eight goes into g. So g is gonna do three minus x squared. Well, x is replaced with eight squared. So this would give you three minus 64. And then we do three minus 64, that would give us negative 61. So that would be the value for g of f of two. So for number nine, there is, again, there is no picture here. So we're going to omit this question as well, since there's no picture. Uh, but uh, if you were to give a picture, then you'll look at the uh, F evaluated negative one first, you find the value and then plug that into the function G. That's how you would do it. Since there's no picture, I'm gonna omit this one.
So true or false for number 10, f of x is 4 minus 3x. Is this inverse of g of x? Well, let's see. Let's compute the inverse formula. So you can grab either of them and then find out their inverse formulas. I'm going to go ahead and start with f. So let's find f inverse of x. So let's see. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let y be equal to 4 minus 3x. Switch x and y. So you'll have x equals 4 minus 3y. And then solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add 3y to both sides. So you'll have 3y and then subtract x. So it'll be 4 minus x. And then we divide by 3. So you'll have y is equal to 4 minus x over 3. So this is what we call the inverse function of f. 4 minus x over 3. Now, does that look like g? Um, not really. So therefore, so it does uh, not like g. So we can say that the, the statement is false. So that's one way to verify. Or you could have taken g of x, find its inverse, show that it's equal to f of x and you'll still get the same statement, it's false. They're not inverses of each other. All right, so for number 11, we're going to find a formula for the inverse function of f of x. So let's go ahead and do what we did for a previous problem. Let f of x be equal to y. So you'll have y equals two x cubed minus five, and then switch x and y. So you'll have x equals two y cubed minus five. Now solve for y, add five to both sides. So you'll have x plus five is equal to two y cubed, divide by two, x plus five divided by two is equal to y cubed. And now take the cube root. So take cube root on both sides. So you'll have y is equal to the cube root of x plus five over two. And finally, we call this our inverse function. So f inverse of x, it's going to be cube root of x plus five divided by two. So that would be the formula for the inverse function. So to find the vertex of this parabola, you can do it two different ways. You can complete the square or you can use the formula. I think I'm gonna use the formula. So the vertex is given by this formula, x is equal to negative b over 2a. So this is your a, so in this case it's one, this is your b, which is four, and c is the constant term, which you don't have it, so it'll be zero. So that's the h uh, value or the x value of the vertex. So in this case, we will have um, negative b, so that's negative four over two times a is one, that would be negative two. So our x coordinate is negative two. To find the y coordinate, you plug it in. So k is the function evaluated at h at negative two. So that would be negative two squared plus four times negative two. That is four minus eight, which is negative four. So the vertex will have the coordinate h comma k so in this case, h is negative two, k is negative four. So those are the coordinates for the vertex. For number 13, we're going to find the range of this parabola. Now, since this is a negative coefficient for x squared term, we know the parabola is gonna open downward. So that means the, the range will be negative infinity up to that point. <clears throat> so what is that point? Well, that's gonna be the vertex. So let's go ahead and find the vertex using the formula, or you can complete the square, but I think using the formula would be a quick way to do it. So we know the vertex for the h coordinate, which is x, is negative b over 2a. So for this particular parabola, your a is negative one, that's the coefficient in, of x squared, uh, b is negative four, and c is four. So let's plug them in. So this is negative b, so negative, negative four over two times a, that's negative one. So that would be positive four over negative two, that's negative two. So we know this takes place when x is negative two, 
But what is the y value? Because that's how far the range would go. So to find the y value, you plug this into your function, you evaluate h at negative two. So you have negative times negative two squared minus four times negative two plus four. So this is uh, negative two squared, that's positive four minus the negative one, that's negative four. Negative four times negative two, that's positive eight plus four. So these guys will cancel out. So this is just eight. So the maximum here is eight. So that means the range for this particular function, it's going to be negative infinity all the way up to the y coordinate of the vertex, eight. So that is how you find the range of a parabola. All right, for 14, <clears throat> we're going to find the x-intercepts of this uh, function g of x. So for x-intercept, you always set y equals zero. So in this case, y is g of x. So we're going to set g of x to zero. So you'll have zero equals negative x cubed plus three x squared. And then you do some factoring. So let's take out um, negative x squared. You could take out an x squared or negative x squared. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take out a negative x squared. Then you'll have x minus three inside the parentheses. Also double check that you got the same term by distributing. So once this is good, now set each factor to zero. So you'll have negative x squared equals zero, which means x equals zero. That's one of them. And then you set x minus three equals zero. You'll get x equals three. So these are the x-intercepts. So you'll have zero comma zero and three comma zero because y-coordinate is gonna be zero for the x-intercept. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the next part. So for number 15, we're solving this inequality. So let's, since it's already factor, we're just gonna go ahead and find the zeros. So you set each of these to zero. So you'll have x equals zero is one of them. And then two x plus three equals zero will give you x equals negative three over two. You subtract three and divide it by two. So these are the zeros. Now let's plot them on the real line and see what the signs of our expression becomes rather than equality. So this is negative three over two and here is zero. Now these are included part of your solutions because of the equality. There's an equal to on the bottom. So this is included, this is included. <clears throat> so these intervals are, so here's negative infinity to negative three over two. We're gonna test this interval and then we're gonna test negative three over two to zero. And then we're going to test zero to infinity. So these are the interval you're going to test. So let's pick a test value. So for this interval, so negative three over two, that's about 1.5, let's say. So I'm gonna test um, negative three here. And then here I'm going to test negative one. And in this interval, I'm going to test one. So have anything within the interval, but not the zeros. So pick them and plug them into your inequality. So you have x times, uh, 2x plus 3. So let's see. Plug this in. So I plug in negative 3 in here and negative 3 in here. So you have negative 3 times 2 times negative 3 plus 3. So here's a negative number because it's negative 3. Now this result is going to be negative 6 plus 3. It's going to be negative. So when you multiply two negative numbers, it'll be positive. So in this interval, it is positive. So you do the same thing for rest, uh, negative 1 and negative and positive 1. So plug in negative 1. So you'll have negative one times two times negative one plus three. So this is a negative number, negative uh, two plus three, that's positive. So negative times positive, that's negative. And then lastly, we're testing one. If you plug in one into these X, you will have positive. So double check that for yourself if you wanna make sure you got the right sign. And now we decide which inequality we want. We want the expression to be greater than zero. So that means positive intervals. So which interval are we positive? Well, we're positive here and we're positive here. So these are the intervals we want for our solution. So our solutions to this inequality would be negative infinity to negative three over two, including union from zero to infinity. So that's how you would figure out 
how to solve nonlinear inequalities. All right, so for 16, we're going to be sketching this function. <clears throat> so this is again a parabola because of the squared term. And uh, we're going to use transformations to graph this. So let's go ahead and write these down. So we're going to start with our basic function x squared, and then we're going to apply the transformation. So first we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So that's gonna give us the equation negative x squared. So that's what we're gonna get. Oh, let me just write it like this. We don't really need the parentheses yet. So that's what this, uh, this negative is going to do. The two in the front, it's just gonna stretch the graph vertically by two. So it's hard to show that when you're graphing, but I'll still write it down as a rule and then we'll do a vertical stretch by two. by two. What that means is your y values are getting larger by two. They're getting multiplied by two. So you'll have negative two x squared. And then that this x minus nine in there, that's going to shift to the right by nine units. So the last transformation you would apply is to shift right nine units. And that will give you the final sketch. So I always write down the equations as I'm writing the transformation so you know how your final graph should look like. <clears throat> and that's our final equation. So at this point, we all know how x squared looks like. So I'm just going to draw that as a dotted line. So like this. So here's x squared. And then um, we're gonna reflect over the x-axis, stretch it by two. So let's suppose this is the graph for, sorry, not that, um, stretching it by two. So just makes it a lot skinnier along the y-axis. So something like this. So that'll be negative two x squared. And then grab this point zero, zero and shift it right by nine units. So let's suppose this is nine. And then you just preserve the shape of the graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch it and then, um, we will see how that looks like. So here's the shift, and then you make the parabola facing down. So I usually have a hard time drawing parabolas, but I hope you can do better than this, uh, something like this. So this is our parabola. Now, there is going to be a y-intercept further down here. So as you keep going, downward, you'll see there will be a y-intercept. Now, because of the way I scale my graph, I'm not able to draw the y-intercept, but uh, I'll find it anyway for you so you know where to pass it through in the y-axis. So this is our final sketch. This is y equals negative 2 x minus 9 squared. So let's label the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, it's when x equals 0, so you'll have y equals negative two times zero minus nine squared. So that will be negative two times negative nine squared. So negative nine squared, well, that's gonna be positive 81. And then you multiply that by two, that's gonna be 162. So you see it's much, much, much further down. So you'll have negative 162. So your y-intercept will be zero comma negative 162. Further down here, I don't have the ability to scale it at the moment, but uh, make sure to label it on your graph if you're able to, or just put the point on the side so that the grader knows that you know how to find the y-intercept. So that completes the graph for 16. For 17, we're going to be finding the net change of this function between x equals 3 and x equals 3 plus h. So the net change, it is given... <clears throat> as this formula, f of b minus f of a. So you have to remember that. So let's label our points. The first x value you're given is always a. The second x value is going to be b. So let's find their function values. So f of a is going to be f of 3. So plug in 3 into your function right here, where you see x in the formula. This is 2 minus 3 times 3. That would be 2 minus 3 times t, that would be 9. This is negative 7. So f of a, it's going to be negative 7. 
And f of b, plug in 3 plus h into your formula. So this is f of 3 plus h. That would be 2 minus 3 times 3 plus h. Here we distribute the 3. So this is 2 minus 9 minus 3h. And this simplifies to negative 7 minus 3h. So that's your expression for f of b. And now for the net change, we plug this in. So our net change is f of b minus f of a. Our f of a is f of 3 plus h, and f of b is f of 3. I mean, f of a is f of 3. So we take the expression negative 7 minus 3h, and we take away f of 3. That's negative 7. So this will cancel out the 7 and negative 7. You will be left with negative 3h. So that is your answer for the net change. All right, now let's take a look at number 18. So for 18, we're going to sketch this function, p of x, which is x squared minus uh, x squared times x squared minus 9. So first thing you want to do is find these zeros. So the zeros <coughs> are the x-intercepts. So we're going to set p of x to 0. That will give you 0 equals x squared minus, I'm sorry, it's just x squared times. Um, I'm going to factor this a little bit further. That's x plus 3 and x minus 3. So this is x plus 3 and x minus 3. So your zeros are x equals 0 when x squared is equal to 0. When x plus 3 equals 0, you get negative 3. When x equals x minus 3 equals 0, you get positive 3. So these are the zeros. Now you plot them on the real line and see the sign of um, between each zeros of the polynomial. So here is negative three, here is zero, and here is three. Now let's take a look at the end behavior of this polynomial. So if you distribute and expand to get the highest power of this polynomial, you'll get x to the fourth uh, minus nine x squared. So this is the highest power, which is the degree of this polynomial, fourth degree, so you know it's going to behave like this at the ends. And we'll fill in the in-between by looking at the zeros. And the coefficient is positive, so it's a parabola facing up at the ends. So this is positive, this is positive. That's how you know the sign. And now to figure out what goes in between, we can look at the multiplicity. For instance, negative 3 came from this factor. So this factor only repeat once, so it has an odd multiplicity. So that means the sign from left and right of that zero, it's gonna alternate. So if it was a positive on the left, it's gonna be negative here. And then you go to next zero. So the next zero is zero itself. And you look at which um, factor it came from. It came from this factor, x squared. So that means that it's an even power. So multiplicity is even. So we're going to not alternate the sign. So it's gonna be minus. And then three came from the factor x minus three right here. And it has an odd multiplicity, so it will alternate. And that's what we got right here, plus and minus. So that's how you get the sign. You could do the testing like we did for the inequalities, but I think looking at multiplicity will save you a lot of time. So that's why I do this. All right, now I'm ready to graph this. So I'm going to push this to the side and take a look at how the graph looks like. So here's our xy plane. We'll make a tiny sketch. Um, plug the zeros, so you have negative 3 here, you have 0, and you have 3. So positive means coming from above, so something like this, and the negative, we're going to go down, so, so let me try to do it again. So, and then connect to the next zero, and then here you create tiny parabola looking shapes, stay up below, and then go up. So that's how the graph looks like. So this is positive, negative, negative, positive, roughly sketched. So this will be our sketch for this polynomial. All right, so for 19, we're going to be sketching this piecewise function. So it uh, seems like uh, there's a lot of uh, typing issue here. So I'm gonna cross this off. So it's just f of x is equal to that. So let's um, cross this off. So your function is given as a piecewise. So we're going to graph this function when x is less than or equal to 0 and x when x is greater than 0. So there seems to be a typo again. Um, I'm going to modify the question and say that this inequality is just 
Um, so the bottom inequality, let's keep it open. So just that when x is greater than zero. Okay, so uh, so let's see how the graph looks like. So we're going to um, divide the plane into two separate regions when x is less than zero and greater than zero. So let's do the less than zero first. So here is when x is less than or equal to zero. So you're gonna focus on this part of the region. So only this right here, not to the right. So less than zero only. Okay, so what we're ha what do we have? Well, we have f of x is equal to one minus x. So plug in zero. So f of zero is going to be one minus zero, which is one. So when x equals zero, you're gonna be at one. So right here, and it's close because it's equal to. So that's what I modified earlier. And then um, let's plug in another point to, to direct the graph. So plug in something that's less than zero, say negative one. So what is f of negative one? So that'd be one minus negative one, which is two. So uh, f of negative one is two. So negative one is right here. We're gonna be at two, so somewhere right here. And you see which direction it is going. You can plug in more points, but I think you got the idea. So I'm gonna just do that. So that's the graph of f of x equals one minus x when x is less than or equal to zero, only on the left side. And now we focus on the right side when x is greater than zero. So again, at zero, but greater than zero. So plug in zero into this, you'll get zero. So right here, we're gonna keep it open because you cannot close um, two points on the same graph or else it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. It wouldn't be a function. We want this to be a function. So um, now plug in another point that's greater than zero, for instance, one. If I plug in one, I get one because f of one right here is gonna be x, so it's one. So one gives me one, so when x is one, our function is at one. And you see which way this is directed, so just connect them. So that will be the graph for f of x equals x when x is greater than zero. And that completes our piece. Both of them together create the function f of x. So f of x is piecewisely defined. All right, moving on to the last problem. So this is the last problem of this test, number 20. We're going to be sketching this function by using transformation. So another graph for transformations. So uh, uh, we'll start off with the basic function. So we're gonna start with a square root of x because that's the form that we're gonna apply transformation on. So the negative in front of the formula represents reflection. Over the x-axis, we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So that will give you the equation negative square root of x. And lastly, we're going to do this transformation, which is x plus two. So that's a horizontal transformation. We're going to the left. So this is gonna shift left two units. So shift left two units. So that'll give you a negative square root of x plus two, and that's your final sketch. So here's how the graph would turn out. So by now we all know how square root of x looks like. So square root of x, I'm gonna draw it as a dotted line like this. So it looks something like that. This is a square root of x. And then you reflect over the x-axis so you get this particular graph, negative square root of x. And now go to the left, two units, so one. So let's say this is negative two. And then you just make the shape. So I'm gonna use different color to indicate the final sketch. So something like, that. so this is our final sketch, y equals negative square root of x plus two. Let's label the y-intercept. So for y-intercept, we know it's gonna be when x equals zero. So you'll have y equals negative square root of zero plus two, which is negative square root of two. So whatever that number is, we just write it negative square root of two. That's good enough. And that completes our sketch. All right, so I hope this is, yes. So this is the end of the test. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful. Now do some more problems on your own so that you are prepared for your midterm. All right, so see you next time. Take care, everyone.